Hello, welcome again to Bench Warmers talking some hoop this week. Rob Klinkafus from South Coast State University coming up in a little bit, talking about all the new jackrabbits they've got coming to Brookings this fall. Joined first, though, by Shane Warwick from Warwick Workouts in Sioux Falls. How are you, man? Great. How are you doing, Tom? Good. Very good. Good. You're busy, busy, man. June and July is camp season, and you get into August a little bit, but it's, it's time right now for summer development right no doubt there's uh like we had camps running from the end of may till right up to august 15th okay um north dakota minnesota you guys have, have branched out from just sioux falls in south dakota you got things going on in north dakota and minnesota right yeah we have a, a north dakota director up there that's running um a lot of our camps up there we're still up in north dakota a little bit but our uh, summer camp schedule we're really around about the five state area yeah and uh naturally heavy here in sioux falls all right, um, you built a great reputation for instruction for high school kids and college kids. How long have you been at it? Just just in the workout phase. You were a coach long before that, right? But yeah, so I think it's I think we're at about thirteen or fourteen years. Is that right? All right, um, you have some T-shirts or had some that said I think skills win. Is that one of the slogans or what was yeah. it? Yeah, you can talk about high school kids and building a skill, right? You can become a really good high school basketball player by just building up. A specific skill can't you yeah and that's something we've talked with kids a lot about that uh, basketball really is a skill sport that's something you can work out you can become a better shooter and better ball handler passer understanding the game uh, decision maker um, naturally athleticism helps but yeah uh, right on the basketball side it, you know we try to put all this stuff other stuff aside and and if you want to be good you want to get better at it it's just something you can work at yeah it's not necessarily about size and where you're from or where you started playing basketball but if you can be a shooter you can be like you said a distributor a smart player that is going to help you with whatever if you want to play in a high school team or whatever and that's kind of what you guys do that that is what you guys do right yeah no doubt there's uh, uh naturally everything we've done expanded as far as running different programs but uh, at the heart of the heart of it it's really just about becoming a better skilled player better person all right there you you do take a lot for that part of it not just the basketball but the the personal development and at the high school level at least you have to keep it fun and to keep kids involved you still do don't you yes no doubt i mean if if it's not fun they're not going to do that part so that na naturally is a piece of it but uh just everything that comes with it becoming a good person how you can use sports to that's going to affect you later in life and and uh the decisions you make the choices you make and so that's that's all kind of wound up in it. All right, we were just talking about technology a little bit. This this <clears> is <throat> fascinating to me that, and you don't necessarily have all these toys right now, but in the future, maybe in the next year or two, you're going to have like video. You watch an NFL game and the quarterback goes to the bench and he looks at a screen, and he's watching the last series that he came out of on the field. You're going to develop some things like that for basketball where kids can maybe go shoot in the gym, and while you're recording them, two minutes later they can go watch themselves. Yeah, stuff like that. There's right? a. <clears throat> a lot of stuff that we do right, <clears throat> excuse me, that we do right now, you kind of have to do it all handheld, and that's something that we're looking at getting. So if we have a group of workouts or somebody comes in for an individual workout where you could videotape the workout and then actually send it to the, to the player and they could go and actually w watch their workout. So a lot of the stuff that you're teaching or seeing or maybe the speed or pace of the workout, they'll get to see that yeah. you know, firsthand, and, and it's just another great teaching tool. It's like a golf swing. If you watch yourself in a golf swing, it's easier to improve it. That's that's a great tool for basketball, really. Yes, Because no kids doubt. can probably learn that way more than, as well as anything else, right? Yeah, you know, film don't lie a lot of, on yeah, that part, yeah. so it's always, uh, and like I said, probably the biggest part is, is the teaching piece of it, and uh, kids are always interested to kind of watch and see how that, and see how it develops and see how it becomes better. All right, end of June and July, you guys are just going strong with camp after camp, week after week, right? Yeah, so we've got, uh, we've got a girls' elite camp that's, uh, uh, finishing up this week and then we'll get into our uh, two boys elite camps uh, coming up over the next couple weeks and and then uh, like I said right up till August 15th we've got a camp um, every week in in Sioux Falls and then across the Midwest. Rolling strong man. All right let's talk a little bit about where you came from Castlewood South Dakota high school right? Yeah. Played it played at Northern State. I think we have a picture here of you uh, playing at Northern State. If Levi do we have that? No I couldn't that's the only picture I could find of a, of a Warwick. There are no pictures. This is the lovely Dion, but yeah. there are no pictures of you playing basketball at Northern State back in the 80s. I could find some of your son, Sky, yeah. who played there as well. But uh, NSIC All-Conference in 1988 yep. at Northern State, it, that is one of the great traditional programs in South Dakota, isn't it? No doubt. That was just, uh, it's, uh, you know, I think what have we got, 10 years in a row for the D2 national attendance. Yeah. And, 
just uh, naturally special special place to play and and uh, go to school. So yeah, no regrets there at all. All right, and as an alum of Northern State, they just hired a new coach in Saul Phillips, who came around from North Dakota State. He was at Ohio. Uh, some pretty good D1 basketball, and now he takes over at Northern. Just a quick thought on Saul Phillips taking over at Northern State. Yeah, no, I think it's exciting. It was a great hire, and, and uh, um, excited to, um, to see if where Saul can take that and take the program. And, and uh, um, yeah, I don't think they could have had a better hire. All right, more with Shane Warwick when we come back here on Bench Warmer. Shane's done a lot of work with uh, NBA prospects, the NBA draft I just finished up. We're going to talk a little bit about what the NBA is looking for in a player coming out of college, who makes it, who doesn't, why it's hard for a summer league player to get to the NBA through the draft. Talk about that when we come back. Bench Warmers on Midco Sports Network is presented by Avera Orthopedics. Welcome back, back with Shane Warwick from Warwick Workouts here in Sioux Falls. And Shane, a lot of work, obviously, with, with high school, even, I mean, in younger players. From What are the youngest kids that you have workouts with? We actually start uh, just some individual skill workouts or small group skill workouts with kindergartners. Really? So, all right. Yeah. So all the way up to through high school and college, you got some college kids coming in. But you yourself have done work with uh, NBA prospects, kids that are trying to get ready for the NBA. What's your experience with that? Um, no, it's been that's you know that's been good. And we've had uh, there was a time that I was going weekly to Chicago, yeah. you know, getting ready for the pre-draft and stuff. And now just with our schedules, um, I'll be out at NBA Summer League and do some workouts with uh, some pros. But pretty much the rest of our schedule that we have going on here, unless the player is willing to come to Sioux Falls, it's it's just hard schedule-wise to get out. All right, talk about. Um the Summit League, it's hard for guys. What's the NBA looking for is, I guess, the big question. We got guys that we see around here all the time. Mike Dom at South Dakota State, Matt Mooney, who was at uh, USD and then at Texas Tech. And these are guys that are phenomenal players, but it's not what the NBA is looking for in, in a certain aspect. What, what does the NBA want? Out of, you know, we saw the top 20 picks uh, in the NBA draft just a couple of days ago. What is the NBA looking for in a player? Well, I think you know, that's when you talk about those two guys, two uh, really, really good shooters. So I yeah. think that's something that they're that it's still a very valuable asset. But uh, naturally, being able to guard multiple positions, I think athletically, um, the way the, the game is stretched and and uh, emits, and it's tough. I mean, it's it's worldwide now, and yeah. as far as uh, that part of it. But uh, you know, hopefully, uh, um, can be on with the summer league team. They'll get a chance to audition in front of all the NBA teams and and then get invited into some camps and, and uh, moving forward there. But uh, just being able to guard at that level is, is probably the biggest step for, yeah, that's for them. Mike's next step, as you said, get into some camps and get in front of as many eyes as he can. And that includes the, the NBA Summer League in Vegas for the most part and is, is one of the stops. But you said this is, this is crazy. This is bigger than what? NBA All-Star Weekend, you were saying? Yeah. If you get a chance, go to Vegas and watch NBA Summer League because it's a blast. Yes, no doubt. I mean, you can uh, see games all day long. You can go, you got two gyms, you know, right there at UNLV that you can go back and forth. So you'll get to, uh, to see players. And you just, uh, it's great basketball. Um, but, you know, even look at that. You keep looking at the rosters and seeing that. Probably two-thirds to three-fourths of the athletes that are playing there aren't even going to make an NBA yeah, team. Yeah. And they're really good. Now, everybody there is going to be making money somewhere overseas or whatever the following season. But, uh, yeah, it's a great experience if you love basketball and, and you want to see a lot of the, you know, even former college stars play. Yeah. It's a big sh you'll see rappers, you'll see NFL guys, you'll see all these guys coming to watch yeah. the NBA Summer League too. It's uh it's amazing all the former NBA players yeah. and that everybody's there so it's uh that's a pretty neat deal if you have the opportunity to do it. All right, and you've got some kind of big time college prospects coming up. You got a college camp coming up here pretty soon and there's some uh, some really good kids coming into this, right? Yeah, and I would say that uh um, you know, that makes it fun. You've got uh players that are coming in that love the game, that uh, that want to get better. Um, naturally, a lot of the kids that are coming in have already got offers. They're actually just coming in for the work part to improve and to compete mm -hmm. in that part of it. Um, and naturally, there's uh, another group that uh, will have coaches in that will come in and they'll get an opportunity to uh, play and compete in front of them. So it's also just another opportunity for them to be seen by college coaches. So it's uh, naturally the elite camp is always a lot of fun. Yeah. All right. Keep up the good work, sir. All right. Appreciate day. it.
Appreciate it. Shane Warwick, you. Warwick Workouts in Sioux Falls. You can check it out online at warwickworkouts.com. All right, when we come back, Rob Klinkerfus, the assistant coach at South Dakota State men's basketball, talking about all the new Jackrabbits that are coming in. We'll talk a little bit more about Mike Dom and what's next for him when we come back on Bench Warmers. Welcome back to Benchwarmers, joined now by Rob Klinkafus, the associate head coach for men's basketball at South Dakota State after some movement around in, in yeah, the last couple of months. We'll talk about that in a minute, but this can be your 14th year coming up at South Dakota State, man. Going into 14 of them, uh, a lot of changes have happened since, yeah, since, it, <laughs> since in I've been that time. around, for sure, you know, all the way through the athletic department. You're kind of an Iowa guy. You are an Iowa guy. A master's degree in education from Drake. That's right. That is impressive. Yep. Kind of followed in the footsteps of my pops. He was an really? administrator for years. All so, right. yep. congratulations on that. Thank you. All right, the NBA draft. Let's talk about that a little bit. Just finished up. Um, Mike Dom. We thought there was an outside chance. Maybe mm -hmm. what 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 were his realistic chances because of how the NBA draft is now? I mean, when when you take a look at the NBA draft, there's there's only sixty people that get right. drafted. You know, in reality, the matter is only thirty of that's guaranteed. So that in the first round, you're guaranteed money. Um, it's not always, other than be able, it's really cool to say you got drafted, even in the second round. Like, that's a nice deal to have tag to you all the time. But it's not, it's not always the best situation for everybody because then they own your rights. Um, so, yeah, going into it, did we think, did we think there, was, there was a shot Mike could get drafted? Uh, we did, and you never really know how all the teams are going to react, especially once you get out of that first round, the second round. Um, there's a lot of things that go on uh, behind the scenes that you're not always aware of. Yeah. But uh, Mike, Mike will figure this deal out. You know, he's going to get an awesome opportunity in the summer league with Portland, who has a lot of experience with mid-major players and uh, really good mid-major players, and Mike certainly fits that bill. Yeah, summer league starts in Vegas, uh, runs July 5th through the 15th. All of the NBA teams, all 30 teams have teams in the summer league, so it's a great way to get looked at, obviously. And then uh, teams can start signing free agents on July 6th, so look for that period uh, coming up during July. But that's the thing for Mike is uh, – you know, obviously you'd be drafted in the, in the first round, yeah. like you said, maybe not a late draft pick. No, sometimes it would have been better. the best thing, but yeah. So he can maybe get a free agent deal would be the next best thing. John Conchar, who was at Fort Wayne, signed a two way contract yep. with the Memphis Grizzlies, which means he can go back and forth between their G League team, which would be like Sioux Falls, the Sky Force, yep. them and Miami going back and forth between those. That, that would be a nice little option, though, too. That's a really good option. Um, you know, everybody that's watching this show has probably seen John Conchar a lot. He's, he's a really good player. Yeah. But Mike, Mike doesn't play second fiddle to anybody that's come through our program ever or, or the Summit League. So this, the Summit League will be an awesome, just a, just a great opportunity for Mike to be able to showcase against other really good players. Um, and his, his NBA dream of playing, it's certainly not dead by any means. Um, it'll just look a little different than getting drafted. But yeah. that happens a lot. All right, so maybe some news in the middle of July. That'd be great. Mike, after, after yep. summer league is done. All right, we talked about your time, 14 years now at South Dakota State. There was some upheaval yep. in the last uh, couple of months as T.J. Otzelberger goes and takes the head coaching job at UNLV. Eric Henderson moves up to head coach. You are associate head coach. Yep. And then Mike Dom and Skylar Flatten and Tevin King all graduate. A couple of David Jenkins goes to UNLV and yep. is up there. Okay, so th this was uh, some, some upheaval in the last few months. Yeah, and, you know, the one thing um, – it's nice to be able to keep some consistency in our program. We still have guys uh, that have played at South Dakota State that will bring back, you know, and obviously bring Brandon Key back from, from the previous year. Yeah. Um, we'll get to that later, I'm sure. Certainly helps that consistency. Um, and then, you know, move, Hendo. Hendo's been here for three years, and I've been here for a long time. So we've been able to kind of maintain a level of consistency, which has been really good for our program because um, at the end of the day, there was no empty offices ever. Uh, like we always had people yeah. around all spring long because no, the first thing you have to do is manage your own roster. We, we feel really good about our young kids. Uh, we, we really like the guys that we got returning and it was really important for us to make sure that they felt comfortable. Um, and then it was our job to add a couple guys this spring that we felt could, could you know, enhance, enhance this team and this program. Uh, and we feel, we feel like we were able to do that. So, yeah, it's, it's been good. It's been a lot of work. You know, this spring's been a lot of work. Uh, we, were, we were on the road a lot. You know, you still got to fill a coaching staff. You got to fill a roster. You got to get your set. Like, there's a lot going on all the time, but it's been it's been good. All right, quick 
association here. We're going to put up a list here of some of these guys. Brandon Key played two years ago, sat last year. He's going to be back for one more season yep. as part of New Jack City. This movie came out in 1991, but everybody knows New Jack City. Everybody so knows here's, Jack City. There's nine new guys. Brandon Key, I guess you could call him a returner, but yep. a little thought on Key. Uh, it's had an awesome spring and an unbelievable summer so far. We're, we're looking for big things out of Brandon. I think we saw the best of Brandon the second half of the year. Yeah. Um, you know, he was he impacted the ball so much uh, just with his ability to pick up and, and get after the other team's point guards in our league. And he, he was a big reason we were playing so well at the end of the year two years ago. Uh, he, he major, major impact on the game. And then with the ball in his hands, we think he's as fast as anybody free throw line to free throw line. So we'll get him out, cut him loose and transition a little bit. All right, Doug Wilson's another guy that's going to be intriguing coming in as a JUCO. Yep, Doug's been fun. Um, we always knew Doug could guard, but now as we get through workouts and you start seeing him live and things like that, like Doug's Doug's pretty special kid. He's an unbelievable person, um, high, high character, and um, he, he can defend almost every, well, we think he can defend every position on the floor, one through five, so right. that's exciting for us. It's going to be different, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's, it's going to be different. Gonna be a different year. Yeah, it's going to be different. Lou Dillon and Dentlinger and yep. Alex Arians, so those guys coming back. We'll see how the Jacks fare coming up in 2019-20. Uh, More with Rob when we come back. University of Missouri, Kansas City is coming back into the Summit League. We'll talk about that when we come back on Bench Warmers. Bench Warmers on Midco Sports Network is presented by Avera Orthopedics. Back with Rob Klinkfuss, the associate men's basketball head coach at South Dakota State. And let's talk about the Summit League a little bit. An announcement in the last couple of days that the University of Missouri, Kansas City, UMKC, UMKC. is coming back. They were in the Summit League up until 2013. Yep left to go to the WAC, everybody asked why, and yeah. now they're coming back. Your first thought on this? A little bit like Oral Roberts did. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think sometimes you're just looking for what you think might be a better fit, um, and you, sometimes you make a mistake, you know, and I think they probably felt like that. Uh, like regionally, UMKC really fits our league. Yeah. You know, they just do, and um, they add some sports that, that are good. And, um, like I said, it's a, it's a good situation for our league because it's, it's manageable travel-wise and they've been able to be competitive and they've done a nice job. So uh, it's, it's a nice addition. I think the way things are going in, with leagues anymore, it's almost the more the merrier because teams will leave anytime too and you, you just, you gotta make sure you take care of yourself first. All right, and it's, it's not like it's a horrible addition. Like you said, you wanna, no. you wanna add teams, but this, it fits because they've been here before. For sure. Men's basketball wise, they should be a good program in that Kansas City area. They get buried a little bit by yep. what else is going on in Kansas City, but they've got a new head coach. Uh, Billy Donlin is and he's the good. head coach of Kansas City who was at Wright State before Scott Nagy was there. So yep, he did hopefully nice he job. can get things going, right? Yep, and uh, I've known Coach Donlin for a long time. He's, I mean, they're going to play a style that's hard-nosed and tough and uh, the same way he did um, when he was at Wright State. Like, he's, he's going to get good players in there, and I, I would assume we'll see a rise from, from UMKC, and there'll be somebody to – to reckon with moving forward for sure. And, and two more games, two more league games is wonderful for you. We're all for who, that. Who works on the schedule Yeah, we're all for that. that. Right? That makes a huge difference. It does make a huge difference. Um, you know, I don't think it's any secret. We'd, we'd, we'd love to have 12 teams in our league if you, if you can get there, yeah. you know, because um, you're guaranteed home and homes and, and home games, and, and that all plays into that non-conference schedule also is how many you can take. But... Uh, any time we can add a quality member like UMKC or whoever it may be to the Summit League, um, it's, it's really a good deal. All right, and eventually we think that Augustana here in Sioux Falls is going to make that move. There's no official, official decision yet. They've kind of yeah. declared that they want to be a Division One program, but nothing officially yet. But we think it's going to happen down the line and they'll get a Summit League invitation. But they would have to go through the transition from Division Two to Division One, yep. And you did that right when you got to SDSU. You guys started that four-year transition. What is the, the biggest challenge? I mean, there's a lot of challenges that come along with that. Um, I think people learn from when, when you're so close, people learn from what happened before you. Um, you know, we did it, and then USD did it. So they have a couple examples that they can lean on a little bit. So that should help them, you know, if they choose to go down that road. Um, but Augustana is a really good institution. They'll, they'll figure it out. There are challenges. Uh, you know, you don't play for anything for a couple years yeah. and, and things like that. But uh, th like I said, they're, they're a good institution um, and their, their programs have been really, really good. 
So they'll, they'll figure that part out and how to be successful. They always have. Yeah, scheduling and getting players to buy yep. in, in those first four years is, it's, it's difficult. is a difficult thing. Yep. So. All right, what's going on in the next month? Uh, recruiting. Recruit, recruit, Always, recruit. right? So yeah, end of July, the, the NCAA has changed up our calendar a little bit. We've got a couple weekends here in June, uh, then a couple weeks in July that we can get out. All right, brother. So. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. All right, thanks a lot. Rob Klinkafus from South Dakota State. When we come back, the Crystal Springs Rodeo going on just uh, north of Clear Lake, South Dakota. A lot of big names, a lot of world champs. We'll talk about that when we come back. Welcome back. Cowboy Christmas is coming to a rodeo arena near you. From June 26th through July 6th, just in that 11-day span, there are 67 pro rodeos across the United States, and that includes 12 just in our area here in the Dakotas and Minnesota and Iowa, and that includes Crystal Springs, known as one of the best and the oldest small rodeos in America, held every June just north of Clear Lake, South Dakota. For the third year, Crystal Springs will host the Extreme Bulls, 30 of the best riders in the country go at it, and then the top 10 scores come back for the final round. Three of the top 20 in the world are set to ride, uh, including Chase Doherty from Oregon, who won the average last year at the National Finals Rodeo. The best in the Dakotas will compete as well. Wyatt Gregg from Belfouche, Artie Meyer from Timberlake, Riley Blankenship from Kildare, North Dakota, all set to show off in the Extreme Bulls on the opening night. And then the 74th annual Crystal Springs Rodeo runs Thursday through Saturday. Uh, always the best in the Badlands. The uh, Bronc competition, Saddle Bronc loaded again. J.J. Elsher, Tegan Schulte, all those guys set to uh, compete. The big boys in steer wrestling compete Thursday through Saturday. Reed Crager and Jason Floyd from Buffalo, South Dakota set to go. They've won it the last couple of years. Barrel racing, always one of the highlights of the night. Joe Moody from Pier, Christy Steffes from Vail, South Dakota, a few of the headliners in barrel racing, which will run during the three-day run at Crystal Springs Rodeo. And Midco Sports Network will be there to record all of the performances, including the Extreme Bulls, and we'll start playing them back here uh, starting on Monday, July 1st, running through Thursday, July 4th, here on Midco Sports Network. We'll see you next week on Bench Warmers. <laughs>